Hello there and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel. I'm the Orange Genius, but you may call me Eric, and in the last episode, we left off underneath ho the Hotel der Himmel. And we took care of a monster that we needed to take care of. We defeated it and we uh, thus completed a request. And on our way back, we um, started hearing classical music and we made our way over here through a secret passageway. And now we are what's bound to be the Opera House. We are bound to be underneath the Opera House, so let's get up in that. For some reason, we wanted to go there, so let's go there. Mater Park is what it said. What? Oh shit. Oh, that's not the Opera House, guys. Uh, isn't this Mater Park? If so, we're not far from the City Hall. The heck? Mater Park. Huh, who would have guessed that those underground tunnels would spit us up somewhere like this? The layouts remained unchanged since it was created during the Dark Ages. You can really feel the city's history. It seems like the network of passages here is even bigger than Berea Hart's underground waterway. Hmm. Hey, Elliot. Is something wrong? Ah, sorry. I was listening to the sonata, and then I, reali then I realized that the mus musicians playing it over there are actually friends of mine. They look like students. Hmm, they seem exceptionally skilled for their age. Oh, they are. I'm really proud of th uh, I'm really proud to know them. Um, would you mind if I went over there and said hi? Oh, sweat, go ahead. Perhaps we should go and greet them too. Perhaps we should. Crystal Garden. The three dudes down there. Matter Park. And this is our... Let's go see my friends. Yeah, it'd be nice to introduce ourselves too. Intriguing. I mean, I don't really... They have to have crawled out of here on their knees. Otherwise, they wouldn't fit through. But, I mean, I guess. That ain't odd. It, it's fortuitous that there wasn't anyone sitting here. Because they would have been fucking weirded out. To say the least. Where are you all from? I'm pretty sure you'll come to a dead end if you go up there. Oh well, just to be sure, just be sure to stay away from the plants. My grandson and I take care of them every day. Be sure to stay away from the plants. My grandson and I have put a lot of work and care into them. I bet. Crystal Garden. I can actually enter. Not what I wanted. The sun. Ah, sorry, the Crystal Garden is closed for the day. Ah, that's right, I do remember hearing that the Crystal Garden closes at 5 p.m. That's a shame. It looks like such a pretty garden, too. I wish we'd stop by sooner. <laughs> it's okay, we're not really that strict about enforcing this closing time. You're welcome to look, take a look if you want. Still, the plants here do, do look prettier during the day. If you have some free time, try and come back here tomorrow. You'll definitely be impressed. My grandpa's taking, always taking care of the park and the Crystal Garden. He's always going on about how his hip's bothering him, though. So I try to do what I can to help him. Flowers. I think it looks perfectly fine during the evening as well. How nice. We've got tons of butterflies, guys. With this many butterflies, I mean, I think the climate would have to be a little warmer than what it what it's looking like right now. It would have to be a quite a bit of humidity in the air. Quite a bit of temperature here definitely wouldn't be exactly bearable, so to say. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be comfortable. As you all know if you've ever been in a in a kind of botanic garden type area. Oh well, it looks very mi nice, and it is a video game. So, let's leave. Nice trees as well. 
I don't know how you do this to keep them growing, but I guess a uh, crystal like glass, um, a glass outside of this building is always good, a good start anyways, and the architecture in this place is quite nice as well. Oh, one of my viewers would know more about that though. Here, take a look at that architecture. Nice pillars too, heh, <laughs> and arcways. Cool stuff. Do, 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 do. There's got to be a nice spot somewhere around here. Ooh, this looks like a good spot. Hey. Yeah, Laura, you do the fishing. I saw it. There you are. Professional fishing with not a beginner rod. You go to luck, sir. Huh? Give me a good one, Irene. Give me a good good one. What the heck is that supposed to be? I don't even know. Dude, can you not do that? Now that's a catch. Arowana. I have never found that before. Arowana, 10 points. Result, it looks like it's silver, so that would be a, a, B, a B rank in terms of rarity. Fish rank rose to black angler. Oh, 500 Mira? Aha. Uh -huh. <gasps> Just like that. Just like that. More. Nope, that's just a crayfish. I don't like crayfish. What is this? What even is this? Yeah, I bet. Another one, another one, <gasps> another one of those arowanas. Nope, an orc carp, I think. Caught one! Alrighty. Let's ask the smart book what it thinks about those fish. Trout, a medium-sized covered, a me medium-sized fish covered with steel blue scales. Some say that it is sub, uh, it, it is a subspecies of landlocked salmon. Its features differ depending on the region it lives in, and some even find their way to the sea. Rarity is C, a seven to nine points. Arowana. A beautiful medium-sized fish with a red and gold coloring, far more savage than its appearance would suggest. Its target, it targets prey that jumps above the water's surface, jumping dynamically through the air. Cool. Cool stuff. Okay guys, you like arowana? Wanna see my arowana? Can you not loiter around while I'm talking to my girlfriend? Here, take this book and go somewhere else. It's embarrassing having someone watching us. Uh, okay, thanks. That's, I mean, I guess. Why don't you buy me a new bag? Cheapskate! <laughs> no, no, not to worry, my sweet. I'll be sure to buy it for you. In about five years, when I've saved up enough money to afford it. That's a promise, then. I mean, if you spend your time giving random books to strangers, then you shouldn't be surprised about not being able to afford a freaking bag. You know? You catch my drift? Thanks for the book, though. Rosetta. It's gotten pretty late. Let's head home, Coco. It's gotten pretty late. Hey, today was so fun. See you tomorrow, Rosetta. Coco and Rosetta. Let's go see my friends. Yeah, it would be nice to introduce ourselves, too. Jonathan. Those students over there come here to perform pretty often. They're pretty good, too. I wonder what academy they're from? Well, take a good guess. Those students over there come here to perform pretty often. Golden juice, apple juice, orange juice. Is this good? Mm. 100% pure apple juice. Pure orange juice squeezed from premium ripe oranges. Man, I wish I could have some. Golden juice. 
so this is a fresh juice store, I guess. So we could talk to them, or we could just read a book, right? Right though, I should have gone left. Every time I do this, I get to voice, and it's just one click left. But I always go like this, why do I do this? Okay, we're gonna read Red Moon Rose Chapter 8. Are we really gonna read Red Moon Rose Chapter? We are really gonna read this. The truth! The stillness of night came once again to the streets of Heimdall. A betwitching and eerie red moon hung full in the sky, its carmine glow staining the red bricks of the surrounding buildings and even deeper crimson. After the gruesome discovery of the bodies that day, the Gerard team had strengthened its nighttime pat patrols. Most of the soldiers in the team were on the streets, determined to prevent any further violence and repair the damage to the Imperial Army's honor. Their patrol. Patrol routes had them taking um, had them making tight circuits of the city roads, vigilantly searching for anything out of order. On one particularly dark street corner, a block away from the Ar Allegria Tavern, Allegria Tavern, stood a young man in military uniform. Much like the others, he was making the rounds in this thoroughly deserted patrol area. A, a figure turning onto the street just ahead of him made him pause mid-step. Warily, he put his hand on the sword at, at, on the sword at its waist. At his waist, as the figure drew closer, the features gradually became more visible. It was another soldier like himself. It was Alphonse. Alphonse stepped forward and stood silently before the other young man. He fixed him with an unwavering gaze. Ah, it's you, the young man said, sounding annoyed. What are you doing here? This is my patrol area, not yours. He glared at Alphonse with intense dislike, but Alphonse did not look away. I came to ask you something, Alphonse replied simply. He put his hand into, the, uh, into his pocket and took something out of it. It was a dirty piece of cloth. The other man looked puzzled. What's that supposed to be? It was something I found in the area where the vampire appeared last night. It's also yours, isn't it, Elroy? Elroy stared back at Alphonse, then rolled his eyes. His voice dripped with contempt. Well, what are you talking about? Did you really ban in your post over... Oh, oh, D did you really ban in your post over who some rag might belong to? And vampire? You're supposed to be a soldier, not some kind of superstitious lunatic, he scoffed. This is part of the bandage you w w were wearing around your left arm when you said you were injured in training, Alphonse said calmly. The cloth, Alphonse continued, must have been cut from his bandage during the previous day's battle and ended up between the two buildings in an area they neglected to check. He didn't, however, mention who had done the cutting. There was no need to tell Elroy information that he already knew, after all. Hearing this, Elroy clutched his left arm, hidden under the sleeve of his army on a uniform, almost as if trying to hide it from Alphonse. Besides, the idea that you were injured badly enough to, to need a bandage like that in standard training make makes no sense to begin with. You're the most skilled swordsman of the Gerard team, after all. That's not to say you weren't actually injured, especially considering there really was fresh blood on the bandage itself. But you didn't injure yourself during training. You were sta stabbed by a rapier, and that was that what that bandage was in intended to disguise. Elroy said nothing. Under any un other circumstances, he would have been quick to argue back, but not this time. His b brow furrowed, and he glared angrily at Alphonse. I'm sure that you must have replaced the bandage with a new one last night, but then, what was this doing at the scene of the crime? You weren't involved in this morning's this investigation. Alphonse was aware that he was saying that what he was saying wouldn't be enough to prove that uh, to the world that Elroy was a vampire. They were, after all, creatures of le they were, after all, creatures of legend. People would never believe him. What it did prove, however, was that Elroy had been where Rose and the vampires' battle took place. And considering that Alphonse already knew that vampires were no mere myth, that was all the proof he needed. I don't want to be. Re I w don't want to believe it myself. I can can't bear to think that someone who I served alongside as a soldier, someone more skilled than any of us, is actually a monster who's been in dis indiscriminately murdering people. Elroy made no reply. He just stared down at the ground, silent and tense. But I am a member of the Gerard team, Alphonse continued resolutely, and we are entrusted with the task of protecting the city. I have a duty to do what I can to prevent any more lives from being lost. Unless you can prove that what I'm saying isn't true, I'm going to have to arrest you as a suspect. <laughs> Hands at his side, Elroy let out a short, quiet laugh. The second he did, something changed. 
and the atmosphere became oppressive. <laughs> Elroy threw back his head and let out a loud maniacal laugh. It was an inhuman sound that, outbur that outburst, the skin crawling utterance and was entirely unlike the usual quiet Elroy, and his mouth yawned wide. Alphonse saw that he knew he were what he knew he would, beast-like fangs, the fangs of a vampire. Alphonse placed, ha placed his hand on the saber at his waist and drew it as fast as he could. The sound of blades scraping against scabbard cut short the awful laugh, but he wasn't fast enough. Before he knew it, Elroy was right in front of him, swinging his own sword with incredible force. Alphonse barely had the time to block his arc with his own. The sound of metal against metal filled the air, and the monstrous strength of the blow pushed Alphonse backwards. It was obvious to him that Elroy's power was vastly greater than it had been when he took that punch to the stomach several days before. If Elroy had been this strong, strong that day, Alphonse knew that he would already be dead. Barely managing to hold his position, he clung, his, uh, clung to his saber with his uh, now somewhat numb hand. But the vampire was already drawing back for another strike, planting his feet firmly on the ground. Alphonse was just able to parry the blow, but it was all he could manage. If he strayed even a hair from focusing on defense, he would soon be overwhelmed. Elroy, meanwhile, maintained his onslaught, seemingly without effort. Blow after blow rained down relentlessly. You should have waited, Alphonse. Surely you know that vampires can only use their powers at night. Alphonse grunted as he narrowly deflected another attack. Naturally, he did know. He was fully aware that waiting until morning might have actually given him a chance to defeat Elroy. But he just couldn't bring himself to wait. Not where there was a possibility that he might have claimed another victim that very night. His conscience wouldn't allow him to sleep peacefully in his bed knowing that he could have done something to stop that murder from happening. As if to punctuate this point, Elroy knocked the saber from Alphonse's hands with a vicious swipe that drove him to his knees. The blade clattered down on the paving stones far from the fighting pier. You're finished, Elroy cried, turning his sword on Alphonse. The blade flashed up, then descended. Alphonse watched the fall of the sword as if in slow motion. He knew there was nothing he could do to stop it. It would bite through his flesh and send, it, uh, uh, send his head soaring through the air, much like a saber had just done. Suddenly a high-pitched whistling sound of something, something moving very fast cut through the night. And then another, and another followed. The next moment er Elroy's right arm was gone. Blood speckled Alphonse's cheeks like fine rain. And just as he had imagined, something soared through the air and hit the ground. But instead of it being his head, it was Elroy's right arm, sword still clutched in his rigid fingers. Gah! Elroy instinctively jumped back, clutching at his wounded limb, while Al Alphonse stared wide-eyed at, at the many parts of, the, of a Templar sword stretched before him like the flexing of, like the flexing of a metal snake, the wires connecting the razor-sharp blade segments gleaming in the moonlight. A line of tension that ran through the wires, and, the, and they all retracted just as fast as they had appeared. Soon after, a lone figure approached to take their place. It was a woman in a navy blue coat that was thrown wide, exposing countless weapons attached to the battle gear she was wearing underneath. She had sleek, shoulder-length blonde hair, capped by a navy blue beret, beret. The look she gave Alphonse when she saw him was somewhere between exasperation and disbelief. Alphonse smiled weakly. What took you so long? What took you so long, Rose? All right. It's still just ha chapter eight. I don't know how many chapters there are, but there's like space for another five down there. All right, guys, what up? Elite, you take care of the vocals. Wait, bunny ears? I know this one. A Elliot? Elliot, you're back! Hey, great to see you again, Morris. You too, Ron Kalinka? Feels like forever since you've been around. <laughs> you seem you, you seem like you're doing well. So, who are your friends? We're Elliot's classmates at Thor's Military Academy. It's a pleasure to meet you. It seems we're all about the same age, too. So, you're Elliot's hometown friends, then. Which school's uniform is that? 
Ah, uh, we're students at the, at the music academy. Music, huh? Yeah, it's an academy that puts the main focus on music. The school itself is on the outskirts of this district. A lot of famous musicians have graduated from there. Well, that explains why you all play so well. <laughs> Thanks. Our academy always plays for the concert they hold during the summer festival every year. Classes are over for the day, so we're just adding a little polish before our performance. Ah, right. This does seem like the perfect place to participate. To practice. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe how good you've all gotten, though. I mean, you were always great, but you've improved a ton. You must have really been practicing. Do you really think so? Well, we have been practicing. I'm practically hearing the songs in my sleep now. <laughs> so true. I guess I'd be pretty disappointed if after all that we weren't getting at least a little better. I just wish you were here at the Music Academy with us. Uh. Oh. Oh, don't misunderstand. Thoris has a really good reputation and all. So, are you still practicing the violin? Yeah, in club practice. I ended up joining the Arca Academy's as wind orchestra, actually. I'm glad to hear it. You were really good. I'd hate to have. Uh, uh, I'd hate to hear you'd given uh, given it up. Hopefully, we'll get another chance to play it together someday. <laughs> yeah, I'd really like that. Wow, is it that time already? We better get on. Get back to the academy. The festival will be here before you know it, and we've got practicing to do. I do admire your dedication to your craft. If you've got some free time, it would be great if you could could come and see us perform in concert. That goes for all of you. The more the merrier. Thanks. Looking forward to it. See you later, Elliot. All right, later. Elliot. Hey, are you? <laughs> nah, it's not that. Anyway, how about we swing by the hotel to give our report, then head back to the house. Sis is probably busy cooking up a storm right about now. Okay. Let's be, let's be off then. Quest Underground Passage Monster completed. 500 Zepeth Masses as a reward? That's tolerable. Oh, that sky. There is no actual way the sky would look like that in Heim over Heimdaller. With this much light at night, no effing way. The more light there is in a town, the more, the more the sky gets illuminated and the less you will be able to see the stars because there's always gonna be, like, well, steam in the air, basically, clouds. They are never non-existent, and the stars are gonna just be blacked out. Mostly, anyway. That night, after enjoying a wonderful meal, meal prepared by Fiona, we were invited into Elliot's room. I see. Oh boy. You play all these? No, you can't possibly. Whoa, this is incredible. He could open a shop with all the instruments here. <laughs> a piano, violins, wind instruments, a robust percussion section. I'm assuming the papers in the cabinet are all sheet music. There's no way you can call this just a hobby. <laughs> yeah, coming in here, this must look like some rabid obsession to you guys. You know, my mom was a pretty famous pianist. Being raised around music like that, my sister and I ended up sharing her love of music. Really? Her mom, his mom used to be, huh? Looking at all this, I can see why you decided to join the wind orchestra at the academy. Still... Why didn't you go to the same school as the people we met earlier? Fee? Wait, Fee, that's not... <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'm sure this comes as no surprise. But I'd originally planned to attend the Music Academy. Oh. Huh. <sighs> 
My sister and I grew up listening to our mom play the piano. Dad was more the strong, stoic type. He didn't know much about music, but he was head over heels in love with her. Our home was always filled with the sound of music, and it kept our family smiling together. But seven years ago, Mom got really ill. Eventually, she passed away. After her death, my sister and I both wanted to follow in her footsteps. She enrolled at the Music Academy and began working toward a career as a pianist. Naturally, I tried to do the same, but Dad wouldn't hear of it. It's one thing to have it as a hobby, but the idea of a man of the Empire making his living through music is absurd. No matter how hard I tried to convince him, he just shook his head and refused to listen. Then he started recommending one military academy after another, trying to push me toward a career in the army. Hmm. Not what I called out in the last or a couple episodes ago. Eventually, I didn't have much choice. I had to give up my dream of attending the music academy. I hated him for it. I really did. I'm no good at fighting, never have been. I'd get smoked in a real war. But after some research, I found one academy, Thor's, offered plenty of music-related classes. And that about half of its graduates end up in careers outside the military. In the end, I met him halfway and chose to enroll at Thor's. <laughs> Kinda pathetic, huh? You've all got great reasons why you're there at the academy. Then there's me, who'd rather be on a stage than a battlefield, but I couldn't go against my dad. For a while, I started to think that maybe my passion for music had kind of cooled off. But I'm still full of regrets about the Music Academy and the Summer Festival concert, so I guess it hasn't after all. Oh, I wish I could just crawl into a hole right now. <laughs> so that's how you ended up at Thor's. I had no idea. Do you regret it? Coming to Thor's and all? Huh? Of course not. Why would I? Huh? So, you don't? Life at the Academy keeps me busy, but I still have time to perform with the Wind Orchestra after class is out. And I feel like I really broaden my horizons every time we go on a field study. Honestly, I feel like I get more out of Thor's than if I had just enrolled at the Music Academy without much thought. Maybe it's because whether I decide I want to be a musician or do something else totally different, I'll at least have the chance to choose what I want without someone deciding for me. Elliot. Wow, you've really given this a lot of thought. You really are strong, Elliot. <laughs> I wish I thought so too. I still feel jealous when I see my friends who went to the music academy putting their heart and soul into their music. But even with that, I've got no regrets about coming to Thor's. None at all. Besides, if I hadn't come, I never would have met you guys, would I? I'd regret that way more. How can you say that with a straight face? <laughs> I kinda half expected all of them to go, oh, but I mean, they, they're not catching on, huh? Maybe he's just oblivious. I didn't think I was saying anything particularly embarrassing. <laughs> I'd figured that most people would blush saying something like that. <laughs> Still, this is Elliot we're talking about. He can get away with it. <laughs> You're the last person who should be saying that, Reen. Actually, I just remembered. I guess I do have one regret after all. Oh? What is it? Remember the summer festival concert my friend said they're going to be performing in? Back when my mom was still alive, she performed in it, and my sister played in it five years ago too. So I was really hoping that I'd be able to take the stage there one day too. Hmm. Two days, huh? Well, why not this time? Afterward, Elliot decided to take the opportunity to spend a night at home. 
So the remaining four of us began to make our way to the old guild building where, where we'd spend the night. Glowing bunny years, Elliot, man. I can't believe it's already past nine. We ended up staying at Elliot's longer than I thought. Yeah, I wasn't expecting her to break out of, out of the coffee after our meal, too. And she even invited us back for breakfast tomorrow. We've hardly been here a day and she's already my favorite person. Well, I have to thank her properly, uh, properly at some point. Still, you know, I've lived here all my life. But it's only now that I'm running around doing field study tasks that I'm realizing just how big this city is. <laughs> yeah, I bet. They're just going to slip tomorrow's tests into the guild's mailbox, right? Did you just take a look at Fee and Laura because they're, like, refusing to look at each other? Yeah, they should be delivered first thing in the mor morning. Considering how organized my father is, I doubt they'll be delivered on time. I don't doubt they'll be delivered on time, though I do worry what we're in for. I have this terrible feeling he'll put us to uh, he'll put us to tasks far more difficult than we can actually handle or something. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. All the more reason we should finish up our report and hit the sack early, I suppose. Hey, what's wrong with you two? You you're tired or something? You've been awfully quiet. No, not really. However, listening to Elliot has uh, has finally shown me what I must do. Fee, I challenge you to a duel. I, I, you know, wanted to make a joke out of we have to go to the concert and play the flute together or so something like that. But I mean, I guess. Fee, I challenge you to a duel. What? Uh. Okay. Tonight, right? Yes, tonight. I fear I won't be able to sleep until this has been resolved. Uh, hold on a minute! Where did this come from? A duel? What are you talking about? Exactly what it sounds like. Fee and I will face, uh, face each other in single combat to determine the victor. That's all. Oh, that's all! Are you kidding me?! Well, you can't do it in a populated area like this, especially not at night. You'd wake the whole neighborhood. How about that park we were at earlier? Matter Park, I think? That seems like an ideal venue. The area around the exit from the underground pass, it should be nice and quiet. Well, that doesn't sound too bad. Oh, but honestly, Reen, you're not just going along with this, are you? Oh, shush it. The capital might have a heady nightlife, but there's no that's no excuse to cause a commotion. Bleh. <laughs> All right, let's head over to the park then. The trams are still running, right? They run until 11. Are we seriously doing this? Guys, take the healer with you, please. Former guild branch. Anything in there? Anyone waiting? Anything waiting? No. Fair enough. You're gonna fight. You guys are gonna fight. What's going on in a while? Let's actually start by going into the Alto house. Who runs finally home? Now we can finally eat dinner. Who's Ron? Ron. Wait. Ron! Ron, we literally just met you at Martyr Park. Ah, oh, hey, you're Elliot's classmates, aren't you? My mom's pretty forgetful, you see. She doesn't have a clue about music either, so so she's not so she just doesn't get how important practicing is. My mom's pretty forgetful, you see. She just doesn't get a clue about she doesn't have a clue about music either, so she so she doesn't get how important practicing is. What time do you think it is, Ron? What in the world have you been doing? I told you earlier, didn't I? I've been practicing for the concert at the summer festival. 
What time do you think it is, Ron? Where in the world have you been? Ron is not only a friend of Elliot's, but he's also living around the neighborhood, huh? A while. Hmm. Ron and his friends will be performing at this, this year's summer festival concert. They've been practicing every day, but you can't tell but you can tell that they're sad that Elliot won't be playing along with them. His violin always was the center of the group. It's already been four months since Elliot left the uh, left for Thor's. He hasn't given up on music at least, so there that's there's a nice chance that they'll play it together again. Oh, are you heading off somewhere? The horrible trams will operate until 11 p.m., so make sure you're done with your business and be back home by then. Agnes. Jeez, why is it that most of our regulars only ever come here in the evening? Oh, by the way, we take orders right up until 11 p.m., so don't you be shy about putting in an order or two. Jeez, work sucks. <laughs> it's been a while since I popped my head in here. Hemmings' taste in music is as, impe as impeccable as it ever was. This one really brings back memories. It always reminds me of the first time I went to see an opera. He sure knows how to make his customers happy. Hemming sure knows how to make his customers happy. That's what That was decades ago now. I guess we're getting old. I was a student myself when I first took to the stage at the Summer Festival concert. You get the chance to play with a, with a real pros there, so it's an amazing experience. I was a student myself when I first took the stage at the Summer co Festival concert. Oh, work ran pretty late today. I need to hurry home to eat some dinner. Well, if you want to head home, don't go back and forth in this area. That won't lead anywhere. I can go inside. Hey, I'm amazed at how quickly you ate all that food. Our apologies that we made you uh, uh, that we made you cook so much for uh, of it for us. Not a bother. I've been feeling so sad since Elliot left because there wasn't anyone around for me to cook for. I'll be making breakfast tomorrow too, so look forward to that. Looks like Elliot's starting to, to uh, starting uh, started tuning his instruments. He normally ends up working on them late into the night, but not tonight. It's my job to make sure that that doesn't happen. Oh boy. Oh boy. Why did you stop going to the summer festival five years ago? I don't understand that part yet. You can hear Elliot tuning his violin. <laughs> it's nice to be home. Ah, yeah, I should check the piano while I'm here too. He sounds so content. We shouldn't drag him into this. Yeah, I'd hate to disturb him. Fine. Fine, be that way. All right. That's everything here taken care of. Can I only go to Madra Park? Indeed. Before we go to Madra Park, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope I'll see you in the next episode as well. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, toodles!